Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper, and in this video I'd like to introduce a new piece of test equipment here in the Comms Prepper shack, the Signal Hound USB SA44B Spectrum Analyzer slash Measuring Receiver. This is a software defined spectrum analyzer. This is the housing, this represents the RF component. On the computer screen here is the software that powers this spectrum analyzer, it's called Spike. The Spectrum Analyzer and the software are both produced in the United States by Signal Hound, and I'll put a link down below. And this is the first real Spectrum Analyzer that's priced within range for the average amateur radio operator or electronics enthusiast. You can get this Spectrum Analyzer for under $1,000. It's packed with all sorts of capability and features, too many to put in one single video. So I'm going to create a new playlist here in the channel, and as I relearn old skills and learn new skills working with the Spectrum Analyzer, we're going to add videos to that playlist to how you can use a spectrum analyzer in the amateur radio hobby and how spectrum analyzers could be used to support emergency preparedness and emergency communication. What I'll do now is roll over to the desktop capture software so you can get a better view of the spike software that ships with the unit and actually controls the spectrum analyzer. And we'll poke around and look at some of the different features and we'll pull up the two meter amateur radio band so you can see how a spectrum analyzer can look at an entire segment of spectrum and give you situational awareness of what's happening around you. If you're looking for a repeater out there to see what kind of activity you have in your area, a spectrum analyzer is an amazing tool to achieve that goal. So let me go ahead and roll over to the desktop capturing software and show you the magic under the hood of the Signal Hound USB SA44B Spectrum Analyzer Measuring Receiver. All right, so let's try some spectrum analysis of the two meter amateur radio band. We'll go ahead and open up the Spike software. The software is connecting to the device and it'll initialize and start its first sweep. Now when the unit first activates or initializes, it does what they call a full span sweep. That means the lowest point of its capability to its highest point. So this spectrum analyzer works between 100 kilohertz to 4.4 gigahertz, and that's what's taking place here. The unit is scanning that entire spectrum capability of this spectrum analyzer, which is way more information than we need. We want to take a look at the two meter amateur radio band. So we're going to limit the sweep or the scan of the spectrum analyzer. And that's done in the upper right hand corner where it says frequency. So what we're going to do is hit the start frequency, which you see here, which represents the lower left hand corner. We're going to set that to start at the beginning of the amateur radio 2 meter band, 144 megahertz, hit enter. And then we're going to set the limit to the upper end of the 2 meter amateur radio band. So we'll hit the stop here and put 148 megahertz and hit enter. And now we're just sweeping from 144 to 148 about every 150 milliseconds we're doing the sweep from left to right, left to right. You can see all these signals popping up here and that's activity in the two meter amateur radio band. But if the activity ends, the sweep no longer captures that. You only see the spikes when the transmissions are present. Another way of looking at this is with the software spectrogram up here in the upper left hand corner. We'll use the pull down menu. We can hit two dimensional and this is a traditional waterfall you may be familiar with if you use SDR radios. A nice feature of the spike software is it has a 3D representation of what's received and it kind of looks like the ocean floor and you can see all these little spikes popping up here and you can zoom in here and twist around. So each time there's a scan from left to right, it creates a layer that gradually moves to the back as the information gets older. So there's some signals popping up over here to the right. And each time it scans, the old transmissions move to the back and fade away. We'll go ahead and turn that off for now. And we'll go back to the basic spectrum analyzer look here. Now if you were trying to track this, it would be hard to keep track of all these signals popping up. So another nice feature of a spectrum analyzer, let's say you wouldn't have with a scanner, is you can add another trace. This is the first trace or trace one. And in the upper left hand corner it says trace one clear right, which means each time it sweeps it writes and then it clears. We're going to add a second trace and we're going to set that to what they call max hold. So regardless of what's happening, each time there's a maximum transmission it's going to push the second trace up and it's going to hold that there. So you can put markers on it and know what the activity is in the area that you're scanning. So as you see, the max hold is working. We're picking up new frequencies, new carriers. There's a nice large one there. So the momentary capture of a signal shown by trace one down below as a temporary capture 
is held with trace 2 in the max hold. So this is where spectrum analysis really starts. Now you can see what transmitters are operating in the 2 meter amateur radio band in my location. We're capturing it right here. Trace 1 is shown real time. That's the black. Trace 2 is max hold. That's showing what's happened since we've activated that trace. So let's say we want to know what these frequencies are. Well, we can come down here to markers. And we're going to say marker 1. We want it to place on trace 2 because that's the max hold. Trace 2. And we'll say peak search. And now it pops up right there. 146, 910. And that's probably 146, 900, a local repeater in my area here. Now, we're not exactly on frequency because of our scan that we have going on and our resolution bandwidth, which is another setting which we'll talk about in another video. But think of it as the focus. We're catching a lot of data right now, so the markers are kind of getting close, but as you focus in on a specific signal, you can get more accurate. We had another large signal here, so let's drop another marker there. We'll go marker 2, trace 2 and we'll do peak search. It's going to put it up here on this high one here, but we can go ahead and hit peak left and move it over. Now we have marker 2. So now we have 146, 910, 146, 625. And we have more frequencies showing up. We had a big one here. Let's go ahead and add another marker. Marker 3, trace 2, because that's the max hole trace. And we'll hit peak search. It shows up at the highest one, but we'll go ahead and move it left. Now it's on the number two, and we'll go left again. There's a little signal down there. We'll go left again, and there we have it. And this frequency is 145.624, which is probably 145.625. So these are signals that have taken place just as we've been talking here during this demonstration, showing the kind of activity that I have in my area on the 2-meter amateur radio band. Now what we want to try to do is listen to one of these frequencies. So what I'm going to do here is remove the max hold trace. I'll go ahead and turn that off and see where we have activity. We have some activity here and some activity here. So I'm going to bring in a new marker, marker 1. I'm going to lock it to trace 1 and I'm going to go to peak search. And now it's placed on an active channel because again this is the real scan taking place. This is active. Now I'm going to take this marker and click to center and pull this frequency to the center. Now we have it locked here in the center. I'm going to focus in on this one frequency so I don't need to scan from 145 all the way to 149. I'm going to reduce this span so I can get a little more accurate. I'll come up here to span, hit the down arrow, and we'll come down to 200 kilohertz. So now the next time this pops up, I'm adjusting my reference level here. Okay, so now we're seeing that carrier there. Peak search. Now we're dead center on that peak. I'm going to reduce my resolution bandwidth here, and we're going to see if we can decode that signal. I'm going to come up here to Utilities, but before I do that, I'm going to turn my volume down because there's no squelch. Come to Utilities, Audio Player. Now this is amateur radio, so the bandwidth of the signals is 20 kilohertz. You'll see that in your manuals when you get your equipment. And now we'll go to Audio Player. We'll turn the volume up, and we should hear audio. And there we have it. I'm going to get the microphone closer to my computer speakers. And there we are, demodulating 2 meter amateur radio with the spectrum analyzer. Let me get my microphone back on here. So we'll go ahead and turn that off and leave that mode. So we're actually capturing that signal. Now it's disappeared. And we'll go back out and increase our span width so you can see more of the 2 meter amateur radio spectrum. We'll increase our resolution bandwidth here so the scan gets a little more fluid for us. And now we're back to looking at the entire amateur radio spectrum. Now again, this video doesn't even come close to capturing all the capabilities of this spectrum analyzer. I just wanted to show you some basic functionality to show you the potential of a spectrum analyzer for amateur radio and emergency preparedness. And again, as I continue to relearn lost skills and develop new skills with this piece of equipment, I'll add videos to the playlist. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper announcing the USB SA44B Spectrum Analyzer Signal Hound playlist here on the Comms Prepper channel. Thanks for watching, guys.